Our top story on fine print today, where is the Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin? The head of the Russian private military company was supposed to be in Belarus, but the Belarusian president says he is not in the country anymore. Instead, even after a mutiny and a march to Moscow, President Lukashenko says the rebel mercenary chief is back in Russia, it seems. Regarding Yevgeny Prigozhin, he is in St. Petersburg. Where is he this morning? He might have left for Moscow or for somewhere else. But he's not on Belarusian territory. Lukashenko added that the rest of the Wagner troops also remain at the camp where they had stayed before their brief rebellion against the Russian administration. The Russian state media has now put out a video allegedly showing Prigozhin's li lavish lifestyle with a grand palace, a chopper and a helipad on the premises. These are visuals we're now getting you from uh, that video. And the video also shows Russia's FSB, the Soviet equivalent of the KGB, raiding Prigozhin's St. Petersburg Palace. The findings include guns, ammunition, gold bars and dollar bills. And now we're about to show you visuals from two weeks ago where Prigozhin staged a shot lived mutiny against the country's defense establishment, plunging Russia into an unprecedented internal security crisis. On June 24th, the Wagner Group chief released a video on Telegram claiming that his forces have taken over a military district headquarters in southern Russia. Although the Wagner chief made it clear that it was not a coup, his men began their march of justice towards Moscow. Caught off guard, the Russian President Putin opted to resolve the situation through talks. He turned to Alexander Lukashenko, a long-time ally who negotiated with Prigozhin. Uh, by late evening on June 25th, they had a deal. And Yevgeny Prigozhin agreed to turn back and an immediate security crisis was averted. As part of the deal, Prigozhin would relocate to Belarus and the Wagner members who did not join the mutiny would be allowed to sign contracts with the Ministry of Defense. The case against uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin would be dropped and with this, he is he has set an example of challenging Russia's state institutions and walking away free, something that's uh, unheard in Putin's Russia. Last week, it was confirmed that Prigozhin was in Belarus, but now it seems he's back in Russia. Lukashenko's latest statement followed uh, the Russian media reports that claimed Prigozhin was spotted in St. Petersburg. His presence was seen as part of agreements that allowed him to finalize his his affairs there. Reacting to the development, the Kremlin says it is not tracking Prigozhin's movement. It is also noteworthy to say that all of these developments came just hours after the Russian state television launched a fierce attack on the Wagner chief. He was branded a traitor on the show, which claimed that an investigation was still being pursued against Prigozhin. For more on this, now we're being joined live by Glenn Deason, who is a professor of international relations at the University of Southeastern Norway. Glenn Deason, thank you very much indeed for talking to us this evening. What do you make of the statement by the Belarusian President Lukashenko? Uh, does it indicate that the deal is off that had made sure that Prigozhin was out of Russia? Uh, it kind of seems like a mixed signal there. Uh, yes, it's definitely a mixed signal, and that's uh, part of the lack of clarity around this. Uh, so again, it's uh, I've, I've been looking for confirmations in terms of exactly where it is, which doesn't appear to exist. But it is correct, the, uh, President Lukashenko of Belarus uh, argued that he had left Belarus for Russia. Uh, it's a special, uh, it's very unique for Russia to have such a deal, but it's a very unique situation as well, uh, having such a large mercenary group which have also been recognized for being having great fighters and uh, having have, uh, have had several achievements uh, which have uh, made them uh, win over a lot of sympathy for many Russians. So uh, the deal was seen as a good way of uh, solving this issue instead of having Russian soldiers killing other Russian soldiers. Uh, however, if <laughs> whether or not the deal allows for Prigozhin to travel to Russia, whether or not he has permission for it, we actually went there. It's uh, it's all very unclear at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but Glenn, Deason, in your in your perspective, uh, if we contrast uh, this to other uh, like Alex Navalny, the treatment that he's got, he's been in and out of jails in uh, Russia. To what we are seeing with Prigozhin, what's the difference here? Is Ru is Putin finally afraid 
that if he puts Prigozhin behind bars, there could be a larger mutiny in Russia. And the fact that state television in Russia is now showing, uh, you know, visuals of opulence uh, of the Wagner chief. Well, this is a problem of um, of, uh, of, of a mercenary group. Uh, I think Navalny would be a wrong example because he doesn't really have much support or or legitimacy in the same sense as uh, Prigozhin had. The, the problem with any mercenary group is well, the advantage obviously is that they can act outside. A government. It can do things which the government probably wouldn't want to get its hands dirty with. It can attract a special kind of people. Uh, the, the weakness of a mercenary group is exactly the same. It attracts a different kind of uh, per, per, per person uh, and also acts a bit outside, in, in, outside government control. Now, the problem is uh, it doesn't then abide by the same uh, strict uh, command structures which you would find in the military. So you've effectively set up a somewhat autonomous group and this was fine when they worked in smaller uh, in smaller scale in Africa. But now that they're across the border in Ukraine, they've taken over taken on such a huge uh, task. Uh, it it immediately creates two centers of power in Russia, which is dangerous. Uh, and this is kind of what, what they had to respond to. Even the rec even their recruitment videos uh, when they want to recruit soldiers, they they kind of making themselves look like the, the real fighting force and almost mocking the Russian army for having. Uh, withdrawn at times while they only move forward. So it's uh, well, once they put themselves a little bit as a rival to the Russian army, and Prigozhin began to well, scold the military leadership. Uh, right. This this yeah, this became a conflict which had to be resolved. Mm -hmm. um, what do you make of you know Lukashenko had a press conference today. He was asked several questions. He was also asked about Wagner uh, chief, the Wagner chief being killed. Uh, he certainly played that down. Uh, there were some comments from him. What do you think is the future here for uh, Prigozhin and what can we make of the statements from Lukashenko's press conference today? Well, I think the problem is uh, actually Prigozhin because, uh, again, uh, he, his objective was merely to, to, to seek more autonomy for Wagner and uh, wanted there were changes in the military command in Russia. Uh, but obviously he took this way too far, uh, be becoming a traitor uh, in, the, in this uh, on, on this path, but uh, but they still uh, they still have excellent fighters, so they they, they still want the, them them to be used, and they're, again they're quite important for Belarus as well, as they're also facing threats from Poland and, and NATO, and also they're having quite a bad relationship with Ukraine as well. So so the Wagners are are welcome in Belarus. The the, the key problem is Prigozhin. Uh, as he seems to be not just flamboyant and very aggressive, but yeah, very unpredictable as well. So it's um, it's uh, it's it's very difficult right. to say how how they're going to re address the problem of of Bergogin. Right. It's anybody's guess at the moment. Glenn Deason, appreciate you talking to us this evening. Thanks very much indeed. My pleasure.